Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the eight hour chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. Now this is the major downtrend that we have going. It's been in place, you can see for roughly a year, the top line is drawn from December, but really you can go back to October of last year. And you can see that we have about four touch points, four or five touch points. We're coming back to a test, which will be $23. If we can get through $23 on the upside, then we're looking at a breakout of this year-long downtrend. Now you can see that the uh, uptrend line here has held fairly strongly. There was this one quick penetration of it just recently and uh, there was a snapback rally. It looked like we were going to roll over and test the lows, but then we snapped back. So we're looking for a test of that $23 price. As we go forward in time, the test becomes a lower and lower number. So we're coming to a critical juncture here where the trend is going to be violated one way or the other, and that is going to be before the end of the year. We're gonna get some kind of resolution on that pattern. Now I want to spend the rest of the night on this story I'm going to call the housing hoax and we know for the longest time that the gold and silver markets have been rigged and we also know that the stock market, bond market and uh, the currency markets are all rigged as well. The bond market, of course, is the longest bubble in history. The U.S. Treasury bull market has been running since about 1981. So we're talking about a 30 plus year bull market. Right behind that, of course, is the stock market. We know that the Federal Reserve is pumping the banks full of money the banks are turning around and buying stocks with that and uh, of course interest rates are so low they can't invest in treasuries there's no yield there so people are being forced into stocks and uh, we also know that the currency is rigged of course I've covered the fact that the dollar is still falling against the Chinese currency but in the rigged basket that's a dollar index it's held strong and that is of course because the American Central Bank has coordinated with other central banks to uh, decrease the value of their currency and therefore keep the dollar index strong. But the other market I want to look at tonight is the housing market. It's my contention that this market is just as rigged as any of the other markets and that's a fairly recent phenomenon. Now if we look at this article from Business Insider uh, this is something that uh, Dave from X22 Report has been covering on a regular basis. And that's the fact that the cash buyers are the ones that are driving the real estate market. Now, one would ask, who's buying cash? Why would somebody buy real estate with cash? Well, these are institutional investors, and we'll read a little bit of this so you can see. Institutional investors and all cash buyers are driving the housing market. Institutional investors accounted for 14% of all sales in September, according to Realty Track. This is up from 9% in August and 9% a year ago. In metros with a population of 1 million or more, Atlanta had the highest percentage of institutional investor purchases at 29%. Las Vegas, St. Louis, Jacksonville, and Charlotte rounded off the top five. Meanwhile, all cash purchases represented 49% of all residential sales, up from 40% in August and 30% a year ago. So you can see they're ramping up this fake real estate market. Quote, the housing market continues to skew in favor of investors, particularly deep-pocketed institutional investors and other buyers paying with cash, Darren Blomquist, Vice President at Realty Track, said in a press release. 
Quote, while the institutional investors are pulling back their purchases in many of the higher tiered markets, places like San Francisco, Washington, D.C., New York, Seattle, and Sacramento, they're continuing to ramp up purchases in markets where median prices are still below $200,000, places like Jacksonville, Atlanta, Charlotte, St. Louis, and Dallas. Miami saw the highest percentage of all cash sales at 69%. 69%. Think about that. 69% of the houses purchased in Miami were all cash. That means that's not people who want to live in a house. That's investors speculating on people wanting to live in a house. Tampa, Jacksonville, and Orlando all also saw a surge in all cash sales. Last month, we spoke to a couple in Florida that had lost out to all cash offers. Outside of Florida, Las Vegas saw also a highest percentage of all cash sales at 62%. Now, here's the chart. You can see that we're reaching to all-time high in percentage all cash sales percentage of institutional investor purchases you can see that an enormous move there in September spiking beyond anything that's been before institutional investor purchases also increased in the states with higher distressed inventory quote institutional pr investor purchases have rebounded in Las Vegas corresponding to a recent rebound in foreclosure activity there said Blomquist now let's get some boots on the ground view of this all cash real estate thing here this is an article that was posted in the Huffington Post now you know I'm not a big fan of the Huffington Post but they do uh, do some good stories regarding uh, the little guy now of course a lot of the little guys here don't have a clue but let's look at what they're dealing with this is boots on the ground there's no escaping the stench of raw sewage in Mindy Culpepper's Atlanta area rental home the odor greets her before she turns into her driveway each evening as she returns from work it's there when she prepares dinner and only diminishes when she and her husband hunker down in their bedroom where they now eat their meals for the 1225 a month she pays for the three-bedroom house in the quiet suburb of Lilburn Culpepper thinks it isn't too much to expect that her landlord Colony American Homes makes the necessary plumbing repairs to eliminate the smell but her complaints have gone unanswered she said short of buying a plane ticket to visit the company's office in Scottsdale Arizona she's out of ideas quote you cannot get in touch with them. You can't get them on the phone. You can't get them to respond to an email, said Culpepper, whose family has lived with the problem since the day they moved in five months ago. Quote, my certified letters, they don't get answered. Most rental houses in the U.S. are owned by individuals or small local businesses. Culpepper's landlord is part of a new breed, a Wall Street-backed investment company with billions of dollars at its disposal now where did those billions of dollars come from we know they came from the fed over the past two years colony american and its two biggest competitors invitation homes and american homes for rent have spent more than 12 billion dollars buying and renovating well maybe renovating at least 75,000 homes in order to rent them out this new incursion by hedge funds and private equity groups into American single-family home rental market is unprecedented and is proving disastrous for many of the tens of thousands of families who are moving into these newly converted rental homes. In recent weeks, HuffPost spoke with more than a dozen current tenants along with former employees who recently left the real estate companies Though it's not uncommon for tenants to complain about their landlords, many who had rented before described their current experience as the worst they've ever had. Quote, I've been renting homes for 15 years and I've never had a landlord be this ridiculous about getting stuff repaired, said Henry Cecil, who moved into a four-bedroom house in Winter Haven, Florida, owned by Invitation Homes in March. Invitation Homes is an arm of Blackstone the largest private equity firm in the world the firm booked more than four billion dollars in revenue in 2012 tenants of these Wall Street backed rental companies have also posted hundreds of scathing reviews on internet message boards such as Yelp topics and Zillow 
These sites also include a sprinkling of positive comments, though they comprise a distinct minority. Most who spoke with HuffPost said they moved into their rental homes only to find that renovations they were assured were comprehensive amounted to little more than a fresh coat of paint and new carpeting. Tenants said they immediately discovered major mechanical and plumbing problems, broken water heaters and air conditioners, broken toilets, and in some cases, vermin infestations, including fleas, silverfish, and rodents. Attempts to get the issues fixed usually end in frustration. The renter said local management companies hired to service the homes ignore calls and emails, sometimes for weeks. When tenants try to get in touch with the owners, the firms buying up the properties, the result is often the same, they said. When unpacking their belongings, Cecil and his wife said they found rat feces in the dishwasher. The sliding glass door that opened onto the backyard was unusable. They tried to take showers, but the hot water heater was broken, they said. Invitation Homes sent a repairman to fix the water heater, but other repairs, including an air conditioner that broke down three times, were slow, leaving the couple to swelter in the Florida heat, they claim. If we had known the problems that we were going to have, we would never have rented from these people, Cecil said. I really don't think they care. You think? Some tenants have grown frustrated enough to sue. James Atwood alleges in a lawsuit filed last month in Georgia State Court that WRI Property Management, the local agent of Colony American, failed to respond to dozens of phone calls even as problems mounted inside his $2,000 a month home. $2,000 a month home. What kind of gross income do you have to have to pay $2,000 a month for your home? Among his allegations, the air conditioner did not work when he moved in, forcing the family to stay in hotels and with friends. Tubs and sinks sprouted huge leaks. Lights would flicker on and off, and the home was infested with fleas, roaches, and even a family of raccoons which lived in the attic, the lawsuit claims. Many tenant complaints that the problems with their homes are so severe they've all but consumed their lives. Several weeks after Rosemary moved into Raleigh, North Carolina, how she's renting from American Homes for Rent, her hot water tank exploded. Rosemary, who declined to use her last name for fear of losing her security deposit said she couldn't shower for days. It took constant calls and emails to the rental company before they sent someone to replace the tank. It was a fiasco. Very stressful, Rosemary said of the incident. She's paying fifteen fifty per month for her four-bedroom house. Former employees of the companies who spoke on condition of anonymity because they worry about jeopardizing their careers said their former colleagues can't keep up with the volume of complaints the rush to buy up as many homes as possible has stretched the resources to the point of breaking, these people said. Complaints were coming at us like a, like a fire hose, said former Invitation Homes employee who worked in the property management division and routinely fielded maintenance requests. Initially, the former employee said the company took care to make sure renovations were up to snuff, but before long, the task of overseeing dozens of independent contractors tending to thousands of homes spread out over huge geographical areas became simply too much, even though the company was hiring staff as quickly as it could. Call centers were overwhelmed. Getting someone on the phone was next to impossible, the employee said. I have no doubt the customer experience was compromised. Other ex-investment company employees spoke of increasing pressure to fix up the homes cheaply and quickly. A former inspector for American Homes for Rent who worked in the Dallas office said he routinely examined homes just prior to rental that were not habitable. Though it wasn't his job to answer complaints, he fielded hundreds of calls from irate tenants. Quote, I didn't know what to tell them, he said. I couldn't do anything about it. It was like pulling teeth to get the company to send out a repairman. In an email, B.J. Bosnecki, a construction superintendent for American Homes for Rent, which has spent more than $3 billion in the past year to acquire about 20,000 houses, said that buying and renting single-family homes on a, such a large scale is a new business model and, as such, systems, process, and procedures are evolving. 
Pesnecki said Malibu, California-based company just opened a new call center that handles all incoming maintenance calls, which he said will improve the customer experience. American Homes for Rent is working around the clock to help us achieve our goal of excellence in the shortest time frame. So I'll link this. You can read the rest. You can see that uh, Wall Street has been given Fed printed money and the hedge funds and the crooks on Wall Street, they've got a new scam. They're buying up the housing. And of course, it's my opinion that this isn't a coincidence. It's my opinion that there actually is at the behest of the Fed and of course the president and the purpose is to prop up the economy, which is absolutely in collapsing right now. So let's look at some of the figures here. This is median new home sale price over real disposable income per capita. Now what this chart shows you is the cost of housing based upon real disposable income. And you can see we're actually at a new high. So if you're going to calculate a housing bubble based on people's ability to pay for it, this is telling you that we are actually in a greater housing bubble than we were at the peak of the housing bubble in 2006 and 2007. In other words, the ability of people to pay for these houses is lower now than it has ever been. Now, let's look at the MBA Purchase Applications Index. This is the number of people who are applying for loans to buy homes. You can see that it reached its peak back in 04, 05, 06. That was the top of the housing bubble. Uh, then we had a big drop in 07, a little bit of a rally, and then we had our big crash. But you can see that the bottom came in about 2010, and we really haven't rallied from there. We're pretty much flatlining at lows that were reached all the way back in 1993. So there's really no recovery in the mortgage applications index. It's just these all cash buyers. Now, this is going to be the key to why that's the case. This is median household income and it's nominal and real. So you can see the red line here is the nominal real median household income that is ticked just barely above what it was back in 2008 right when the economic crisis began and you can see we're just barely above that but if you calculate and of course this is going to be using the feds fake inflation numbers but if you use the feds fake inflation numbers you can see that real seasonally adjusted medium household income is down dramatically it has not recovered there's no recovery there hasn't been a recovery at all and the recovery that we're now seeing in the housing market and you can see that here with the housing prices um, well I don't have that chart here but uh, the housing prices are up in some areas they're reaching all-time highs of course we know that uh, based on real disposable income uh, they're all-time high prices but uh, people can't afford them so what is going on is that the housing market just like the silver market just like the stock market just like the bond market these are all now fake markets we have the government using their proxies the hedge funds Blackstone and other groups they're using these groups they're feeding the money free money through the Fed to buy up a large number of the homes that are available of course we know the Fed is buying 40 to 45 billion dollars worth of mortgage backed securities every month so we know that these companies are going to be able to flip them now further down in that article in the Huffington Post was uh, those three main companies that were mentioned uh, that are doing all of the renting of these homes they're all preparing IPOs they're either IPOing right now 
or they're in the process of getting those IPOs ready. So they're also planning to flip those companies out to the public and make them public companies, of course, preparing for bankruptcy. Now, if you think that the repairs are bad right now on these homes, wait until they flip these companies to the public and their stock goes to zero and they go bankrupt, uh, then you're not going to get any repairs at all. So the situation with the economy is getting worse. The government is trying to fake the numbers, and now they're using these all-cash buyouts of these homes to prop up the real estate market. We know that this can't continue. We know that they're propping all of these things up, the bond market, the stock market, the housing market. They're propping them all up until the next collapse. And this collapse that's coming is going to be the biggest collapse that we've ever seen in the history of the world. And we'll talk to you next time.